Evening guys, usually I try to uh, plan ahead and have these videos all done so I can put them up in the afternoon. Uh, a little bit behind, so I actually had to film this one tonight, you know, Saturday night and put it up so it's going up a little late. Uh, one of the subjects that people always ask me about is the differences between the short tail pythons. Uh, so I have one example of each and I tried to pick three examples in my collection that are the closest to the wild types that I keep. Um, to try to give you a, a better look. So everything really starts when you get into this uh, with Python Curtis, which are these guys here, the Sumatran short tail pythons. Uh, Python Curtis is the original one of the short tails that was actually found. Uh, and that was uh, in 1872, I believe. Hi. Uh, so they found these guys, you know, they're Python Curtis now, um, or Python Curtis Curtis. Uh, I, I guess to, to begin with, we should discuss, you know, binomial nomenclature, which is how we uh, identify animals. And so all that basically means is a two-term naming system, uh, typically with your genus and species. So right now, this is a Python Curtis. And so the genus is Python, and then the species is Curtis. Um, and so understanding that, and a lot of people call them Latin names, and they are based in uh, Latin grammatical forms, but the actual words themselves may be derived from other languages. So sometimes you might have an animal's name that's actually Greek or Spanish or whatever it is, uh, but it's Latin grammatical form. And so that's why people do sometimes call them Latin names or scientific names, if you will. Uh, a lot of us are used to common names and common names can be great, uh, but they can also be misleading. You know, there's a lot of people that would call this a black blood python, when in fact this snake has never been a blood python at all, and it's not a blood python now. Uh, so calling this a black blood doesn't make any sense because it's not an accurate description of what this animal is, and it gets very confusing, uh, especially to a new owner that maybe has a blood python, sees one of these and thinks, oh, well, I can, I can breed those two snakes together. When you're in fact making hybrids, you're not making blood pythons, which is what that would lead you to believe. Uh, so, as I said, these were the first species named, the Python Curtis. Uh, so it's really weird that black blood even ever became a thing. Uh, it really was a name that was kind of applied as a trade name uh, because people were used to in the hobby blood pythons first. Um, but really these guys came along first, so it really didn't make any sense to call them bloods at all. Uh, so anyhow, so originally 1872 they were discovered. Um, and then in 1880, 1881, depending on the source that you read, uh, is when they described what we know now as Borneo short-tailed pythons or Python Breitensteini. At the time, um, they were just considered to be maybe a locality of Curtis. Nobody really knew. Uh, so they were still under that Python Curtis, but uh, they actually became a subspecies in, uh, it was 1935. And so at that point, you had Python Curtis, which was covering these, it was covering bloods, it was covering everything. And then Python Curtis Breitensteini is how they named that. So it had the Breitensteini name even then, it just didn't have, they, they listed as a subspecies of Curtis instead of as its own species. Um, especially back then, we didn't quite have the DNA technology and things that we have now, which is why we know they're separate species now. Hi. because we were able to look at the DNA and see that they're different. As well as there are physical differences, which is how they became subspecies to begin with. And I'm sorry, this is going to be a little bit convoluted. It's kind of hard because you can't really explain something straight without going back and forth and explaining what happened along the way. Um, so the Brighton signing, as I said, 1935 is when they became a subspecies. Uh, a few years later, in 1938, blood pythons then became a subspecies as well. And I believe it was an individual from Singapore that they actually got a chance to, uh, to look at, and they realized that there were a lot of differences there, and that's when it became a subspecies. So in 1938, it became Python Curtis Brongersmai. Um, and it would stay that way for a long time, uh, until the year 2000. In the year 2000... Um, after several years of many people that worked with these species, including the Barkers, saying that there's, there's too many differences, there's too much going on here. 
It doesn't make sense that these things are just subspecies. They should be, you know, individual species. Uh, they were moved up. So in 2000, blood pythons became just python bronger's my dropping the curtis and no longer being a part of what we would call the curtis complex um so they're still pythons so they're still related they're still in the same genus but they're they're separate species now and not just subspecies so obviously uh a year later in 2001 and i've seen some sources that say 2002 same thing happened with the python brightensteiny or python curtis brightensteiny at that time became Python Brightensteiny, and then these guys changed from Python Curtis Curtis to simply Python Curtis as they were originally. Uh, so these guys really haven't ever changed much other than, you know, being given that second Curtis for a while uh, before it was eventually taken away. So by 2002, all of that was taken care of, and since then the taxes stayed the same. Nothing's changed. These guys have all been separate species. So people often ask, what differentiates the animals. Now, those of us that work with these, we can look at 95% of them from across the room and say, that's a, a Curtis, that's a Bronger's Maya, that's a Breitensteiny. Um, it's one of those things that it's, it's hard to teach you what to look for, but you just start to see it with repetition as you see more and more examples. Uh, but what actually differentiates them uh, are the scale counts and the scale patterns. Uh, so the ventral scales, and ventral, we think vent, um, which you can see some ventral scales there, uh, they differ in the three species. Now the short tails, the Borneo and Sumatran, I hate when they back up, it's one of their favorite things to do and it's such a pain in the ass. Um, I'm just gonna keep doing it, he I think, I think this is the male. I didn't even pay attention when I grabbed him out. Um, so anyhow, uh, Curtis, they say typically have between 152 to 157 ventral scales. Uh, that can vary, sometimes they can go a little higher, but it's always under 165 ventral scales. Uh, similar in Borneos, they were found to have 162 to 164 ventral scales, once again, under that 165 plateau, whereas your brongs or your, your blood pythons actually have usually between 168 and 178. So they're considered to be anything that's north of 167. Now, I don't know enough about the hybridization between the species to know what happens as far as ventral scales are concerned. Usually there's enough for those of us that are trained to see some differences, especially in patterns and things like that, because the three do have uh, somewhat distinct patterns, even with all the morphs and all the localities and things, you can kind of tell to some extent. Uh, also, some of the scalation on their, around their eyes or another way that you can tell. That can be a little tougher because those are most of the time they work a certain way, but sometimes they don't. Uh, so that's not always a definitive, whereas the ventral scales, as far as we know, is. Uh, so the difference is these guys, the Curtis and the Breitensteiny, have uh, what we call subocular scales, and the blood pythons do not. In some cases, the scales on top of their head are also different, and I don't know if I can get a close enough look in this lighting or anything for you to even see subocular scales on this snake. <laughs> Not if she turns. Let me see if I can get her to pay attention to my hand. Well, that didn't work at all. Hi. I'm trying to show them. You gotta go over here. <laughs> you can see her eyes are very wide now because I'm doing weird stuff to her. Somebody's going by beeping. And you hear that sound. Uh, I know in a previous video with Incognito there, I described that the short tails like to kind of huff like that uh, and expel air. They're heavy breathers, so that's fairly common. A lot of people mistake that for respiratory infections, which is not. Uh, you'll be able to hear that when they have those. It's a much different sound. Uh, let me pull out the other guys so you can see some of the difference here in this stuff. We'll do the uh, Borneo next. And uh, this is another one you guys will probably recognize. Minnie Lilith, we did a uh, video with her before. Uh, so she's probably my closest wild type Borneo that's gonna sit still for this uh, video. Ethel would be the best, but Ethel would not be sitting like this right now. She would be putting teeth in me any which way she can. Uh, she's a very, very grouchy old lady. Uh, she's somewhere in the realm of about uh, 17, 18 years old and she just has no chill anymore. Uh, so I'm trying to get Lilith here, A, to not put her tail in my mouth, and B, 
to turn her head so you can try to look at some of those scales and it's really hard to see. I would need like a super good camera and uh, to be able to maneuver it into position to really get that kind of stuff. Um, but you can just see in appearance that she looks very, very different from the previous animal. These guys are more typically like a tan brown color, cream colors, things along those lines, a lot of grays. Whereas your Curtis are, typically speaking, going to be darker, more blacks, browns, um, and, and different brown completely. Whereas this is like a tan brown. The Curtis are typically more of like a, a chocolate brown, if you will. Of course, now maybe she'll sit over there. It's not going to be one of those things you're really going to be able to tell from the video. There are some nice guides online that have some really great charts where it shows you, you know, a drawing exaggerated so you can really tell that the scale difference. Um, and, you know, I've, I've looked on my own collection on the tops of the heads there. And the top of the head is definitely one of the hardest places to really see it by because they do vary quite a bit, even within the species. Whereas those suboculars are a little bit more consistent and the ventrals are always the thing that's going to be most consistent. And good luck counting ventral scales on a snake that's moving around. I don't think you can really do it. I always tell people you have a glass table, you can get them to sit still, either do it underneath there or you can take a picture and count the picture because if you're trying to count with them moving, good luck. Um, so once again, you know, this is the Borneo short tail python or the python brightensteiny. And we'll take out the last one as soon as I get her wrangled back into this tub here. Just gonna hand sanitize quick because those two snakes are from one room and this one's from a different room. Nothing going on in my collection to worry about, but I just like to be safe. Uh, never hurts to do that, uh, especially considering it's two rooms. And obviously, you know, I'm not really getting crazy with, you know, doing my arms. I'm not changing shirts. So I'm not completely eliminating any cross contamination, but you know, hopefully you're reducing the risk of anything if anything were ever to happen. So this is going to be our last one. This is going to be our Python Brommers Mai. If I can get her out. Stop. What are you crab? Uh, and she's been on the genetics video, and we did a Meet the Collection video with her. She's my het T positive that I produced back in 2018. Um, I think it was 2018. Yeah. And uh, so you can see the red coloration. Now, not all blood pythons are red but they tend to be the reddest of the three. Uh, even naturally, there tends to be some kind of red hues in there. Curtis, you don't really ever see that. Um, <laughs> and then uh, Borneos, you don't see it really either. Um, so that's kind of where they got the blood python common name from, was not only the reputation of drawing blood from people, but was also the blood red coloration. Uh, I don't know where she's trying to go. I guess she's trying to go anywhere but here. Uh, I don't think we're going to get her to sit still, or you might even have a chance at seeing scalation. Um, I can try. But there's a lot of information out there on this and a lot of reading you can do. I really tried to convince it, can, or condense it into a very basic guide. Um, but it really is one of those things, for the most part, outside of doing scale counts, that you're going to get the most uh, experience just doing over time. Pay attention to experienced keepers, uh, see the animals that they're identifying, and you'll kind of get an eye for it eventually. Uh, hopefully, even though I picked three of the closest to the wild type that I could, you'll still see that there's pretty stark differences between the three, seeing them back to back to back. Some of the orange-headed Curtis, which I don't keep, uh, it's a locality. Some of those and some Borneos uh, and some Bloods can look really, really close. Um, when you get those really muddy brown looks in the blood pythons and stuff, uh, they really can look very similar. But once again, you know, to a trained eye, you can, you can tell most apart pretty easily. Uh, so it's just a matter of gaining experience. She is on the move. It is late, so it's starting to get that time where they're looking for food and being more active. And, uh, I think it's been about seven or eight days since she ate, so she's probably starting to get to that point where she's ready. Uh, she is a snake that I really adore quite a bit. She's gonna be very, very nice and red in a year or two. Uh, I'm already happy with where she's at now, but she's gonna be gonna be even nicer still. So any questions on this, uh, you can comment below and let me know. Uh, once again, I'm sorry, it's kind of tough to follow. 
uh, a lot of information. The important takeaways is they are three distinct species, Python Bronger's Mai, Python Breitensteiny, and uh, Python Curtis. Jesus. And, uh, you know, since 2001, 2002, it's been that way. Um, you know, you'll hear a lot of people say Borneo blood, which also doesn't make any sense. They were never blood pythons. Uh, they were under Curtis, which is a short tail. Um, but once again, you know, when they came into the trade, um, people just kind of gave them that name because unfortunately a lot of reptile keepers weren't really all that smart as far as the scientific end of things go. That's why we have a lot of mis, you know, terminology that's not right genetically and things like that is because, you know, a lot of people that kind of started in the hobby weren't into that end of it. They were into more the hobby end of keeping and things like that. And we didn't have the internet and all these resources that we have now. Uh, so people kind of just pick trade names and they stuck. Um, and some people just don't want to change with the time, which is unfortunate because who likes to be wrong? Um, you know, that's not really a fun position to be in. It's not really the right position to be in. You might as well educate yourself and, and learn and change. I know boas are changing quite a bit now. I don't know very much about boas, but I do know that, uh, you know, the names, the names have changed and they've been reclassified uh, a little bit differently. So it's good to keep up on that stuff. Ideas for future videos, please let me know. Uh, I'll try to get out and do some visits again soon. I know that a lot of those were popular from Dylan's and Scott's and going out to see uh, Joe and Melissa. So I'll try to do some more of that soon. I have stuff planned. It's just a matter of me being able to do it when everybody else is free and all that kind of stuff, adulting. Uh, so like, subscribe, comment, let me know. We'll see you guys. We'll see you Tuesday.